Previously, I began transitioning my dog from kibble to raw food, and as any new endeavor goes, I've made some mistakes, but I'm learning as I go. In this episode, I'm applying the lessons I learned to a new week of raw feeding, and I'm here to document the process. There's a concept I like to call oophonography. After abruptly changing Kichi's diet, I needed to observe her poop for direction. It's kind of like reading leaves in a teacup, you know? I attempted to learn what her divine intestines had to say about her. How long would she live? What is her potential? Will she eventually get married and have tiny little babies? But more importantly, do I need to modify her food ratios? What does she need to eat? Anyways, she had diarrhea for the first two days, which I determined to be that she needed more bone content in her diet. Because if the poo is too loose, you don't have enough bone juice. And if the poo is too chalky, there's too much bone stocky. Okay, listen, I know that diarrhea could also mean a bajillion other things, but because she didn't have it before, the most likely reason was the transition. Now, for the fish, there's two kinds of oil in this world. Oil that kill and oil that fulfill the omega-3 requirements, which is good for their coat. Basically, I wasn't feeding enough fish, so I revised her meal plan, adding all these new things that I had learned. Since she's still eight months old, I decided to keep the same amount of food per day, but change the ratios to 73% muscle meat, 10% organ meat, and 17% bone content, because she's still a growing puppy. I started with the bone content. I needed three ounces of bone per day, and chicken feed are 60% bone, 40% muscle meat, so I'll be feeding five ounces of chicken and subtracting the two ounces from my muscle meat total. Her daily muscle meat total is 13.6 ounces, which will consist of the chicken feet, pork loin, pork heart, and fish this week. I'll be feeding the fish two to three times a week, and as a bonus, I'll be throwing in an egg maybe twice a week. Lastly, the organ meat stayed the same, and I'll be using what was left of the last grocery haul. So I shopped, this time remembering to buy a lot more muscle meat in order to prep more than four meals. Then I chopped, this time remembering to sharpen the knife. Then I prepped, this time remembering to listen to music. Now that she's gotten accustomed to this new diet, I've begun to notice the little things. Like her poop, it's much smaller. Another cool thing is that she finishes her food right away, which makes feeding time more reliable, because with kibble, she would just eat enough to not be hungry and then leave the rest in the bowl all day. Also, I think her coat might be shinier, but it might just be placebo. The downside of this raw journey is that it's an entirely new habit for me, which consists of a lot of smaller sub-habits that felt overwhelming in the beginning. However, I'm getting into the groove of things and I definitely feel like my dog doesn't have kibble-induced depression anymore. And you can tell because Sarah McLachlan isn't singing in the background anymore. <laughs> 